and on. My name is Kim Offord, and I'm one of Angelica Soros, but also slated to present next. And <clears throat> excuse me, I've been dropping in and out on the call, listening to every all of the presenters. This has been some really, really great information. Um, so I want to, she hasn't responded to me yet, but I just want to encourage everybody. I know everybody's multitasking right now because that's what I do when I'm on these Zoom conferences. So I want to encourage you right now, if I can get your attention, this, I guarantee you, um, my presentation along with all of the others that you have heard today are going to be game changers for you. And I think what's great about these presentations is that we have, I've been hearing some things and I've been, and I've said, oh, that's in my presentation. <laughs> and that's a good thing. That's not a bad thing. Um, because it says to me that we're all, all these presenters, we're on the right track and we're giving you the, the information that is definitely accurate and what you need to know um, to be successful. So with that said, um, I have not, let me see. All right. So um, I do not have share screen capabilities. Um, let's see. I'm just sending her messages. Hey, Kimberly, it looks like I still have it. If there's something you want to send, um, can share it, but I don't know if. Let's see. Let me, let me try. I might be able to. I okay. just might be able to. Actually, I do have share screen capabilities. There we go. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. Okay, awesome, awesome. Then I'm gonna go ahead and get started then. Um, so my name is Kim Offord and my presentation is on using AI. Um, everybody, I'm pretty sure you have, everybody has heard about the AI buzz. Um, either you jumped on the ship or you have not jumped on the ship. And I'm here to encourage you, you need to jump on the ship. Um, let me see here. I see some folks have joined. I just want to make sure. All right. So if you can, I want everyone who has, and I can't see the chat, but if you are now currently using AI in your business, can you just put a thumbs up or, or one in the chat or something in the chat that's yes or no. Either one, one for, for yes or two for no, or just yes or no. Okay. You get awesome. a lot of yeses. Yep, I can see it. I, I okay. just was able to pull it up. Thank you. Okay, you don't know how to use it. Okay, yes. And I've seen like one no, not yet. Okay. That's awesome. Okay. All right. So with that said, I want to just say this to you all. There's nothing to be afraid of. We in our community are have set up this, this fear of AI. And I'm here to tell you, you have been using AI for the past 10 years. If you have a smartphone, you are using AI. If you have in your car, your GPS, you're using AI. When you go on to Amazon and you shop and then you get suggestions for other products that you should be using or that you could purchase, you're using AI. Your smart home, that's AI. Everything that your, your, your phone is AI. Everything that we are have become norm what's become normal in our daily lives is ai and so if that is the case then we need to be in these early stages of ai we need to be the users of ai because ai is a learning technology 
if we are not feeding the information and utilizing AI to teach it, then it is going to, of course, be biased. I'll get into that a little bit more later, but let me just first tell you a little bit about me. So my name is Kim Offred, obviously. I'm a member of Delta Sigma Theta, but I'm a realtor uh, in, in the state of Illinois, but I'm also a marketer. I am um, an author of two workbooks that are carried by the National Association of Realtors that focus on um, generating referral-based business. And I have four Amazon titles. And I also have um, the um, founder and the CEO of the referral store, um, which is an online, um, it's a website that teaches uh, entrepreneurs and realtors how to generate, how to build brands that generate referrals and more so on the brand building side of things. Um, I am formally trained bachelor's and master's degree in integrated marketing communications um, and a member of Delta Sigma Theta since 1989. Here's the current process for a lot of you who are vendors or at least the process that we are familiar with and have been familiar with over the years. You either have, you sell by either having event spaces and vendors booths uh, maybe you do have a website and your social media presence is up, um, or maybe you are attending special events, chapter events, line anniversaries, you know, initiations, you get um, business that way, or not many, but some may also have brick and mortar locations where you get that traffic coming in. And even then it's seasonal, or you may have, you know, business by word of mouth. OK, and that's the current process. And if you're OK with that current process and you're saying, hey, I don't want to rock the boat. This is how I this is how I work. And this is where I'm most comfortable. Then great. Then continue to do that. This presentation probably won't be where you want to be. But if you are not um, confined to limits of being seasonal, or control, because that's what those sales are. You are waiting for the next you know, event to happen, or you're waiting for the next line to cross, or you're waiting for whatever to occur and it being seasonal. And if you're okay with those limits, fine. But if you're not, then AI is what you need, or it's one of the things that you need amongst all the other things that everybody else has talked about here today that can get you out of that same, you know, day-to-day -day grind, hustle, same thing, wash, rinse, repeat. It's all about doing something different. So what I want you to do is imagine your life and your business if you could remove the limitations of seasonal and controlled sales and unlock a world of continuous business flow. Because at the end of the day, that's what we're here for. We are here for endless business flow. We eventually want to retire at some point in our lives and do other things, right? And so what I want to do is just introduce AI to you. I started using AI earlier this year. I've already been, as I said before, we've already all been using it anyway, but I started incorporating it more into my business earlier this year. And it has been nonstop since then with the introduction of ChatGPT, BART, Bing, all of those um, AIs. Um, it, it's been, it, it's, it's everyday use for me when it comes to using AI. So for those of you who are beginners in AI, let me let me give you a little, little bit of information. And those of you who are further ahead, a little bit more advanced, bear with me. AI is not going to replace you. Let me say that again. AI will not replace you as an entrepreneur. But an entrepreneur who is using AI will replace one who is not. 
Mark my words on that. And so what I'm saying to you is this, in our lifetime, at least, AI is not going to replace us. And so we need to use it to our advantage. We need to incorporate it into our business. We need to, um, AI is more than just altering your photo to put you in an imaginary world. We have fun with doing that. I do AI art and I sell my AI art and that's a fun thing and I do it and I have a great time with it. But I use AI as my very affordable personal assistant, personal business assistant in many, many different ways. And you can do this through chat GPT and the way that you would get that account is through open AI, through even Canva, which is more so used for graphics and, and putting together all of your, um, maybe some marketing materials. Even Canva now has AI. You will have to use to subscribe and use the paid version of Canva to get the AI advantages, but it's still there. I personally use um, chat GPT, um, mid journey, um, and Canva in some instances, and in a totally different way that I'm going to talk about with you today. So how, what is this role? What is AI's role in your business? I want to open some eyes here. And I'm hoping that those of you who are saying, I don't want to use it. And I'm don't, I don't even want to have any parts of it. I'm hoping that I can convince you that you probably do want to use it. And those of you who are already using it, I wanna to try to open your eyes to different ways that you can use it. So what is the role in your business? It's a low cost, highly proficient virtual assistant. That's how I use it. It is my low cost virtual assistant because I pay use the paid version of ChatGPT. You can use it for research and development, planning, organization and efficiency, for your content creation, for marketing, for creating systems for your businesses. You can have a chat bot on your website. It could be your customer service chat bot on your website. It can even give you business forecasting as well as customer behavior analysis. And that is probably, um, all of those really are, are critical depending on what it is that you do, how you do it, and where you can place AI in that uh, scenario. Now, if you are using ChatGPT or have, or familiar with it, it is a AI where you prompt, you do what's called prompts, meaning you type in a request and you ask the AI to give you the information. Now, that's one easy way to use AI. We're not talking about plagiarizing. We are talking about um, creating, um, creating outlines for yourself creating business processes for yourself, giving you ideas, helping you to, to generate um, better ideas and better ways of doing what it is that you're doing. So what are the top challenges of you, that each of you have as vendors, as Greek vendors? Maybe it's seasonal sales. Maybe it's, you know, figuring out the effective marketing strategies, which we've had speakers here today that have been giving you a wealth of information on all of this. Um, what It may be inventory control, or maybe it's that you're the only person that is working your business. You don't have a staff. And so everything is on you. You have to be the, the accountant. You have to be the designer of the paraphernalia. You have to do all the marketing. You are the social media manager. You know, you're the inventory person and you're the mailroom. So these are some of the top challenges. Well, how can you begin to alleviate the challenges so that you can get to making money? Um, and 
I'm going to show you just one strategy. And that's what this whole presentation is on. I'm going to show you one way that you can incorporate um, AI into your CRM. And I'm so glad that some of the uh, previous speakers were talking about CRMs because there are so many entrepreneurs who do not have a CRM and do not understand the importance of CRMs. Let me give you a little heads up here. Let me give you a little secret. I um, graduated from Northwestern uh, at, with the master's in integrated marketing communication in 1992. In 1992, social media was not what it was then that it is now. There were three disciplines, advertising, advertising and um, uh, advertising, PR was the second one, and DM, direct marketing, was the third discipline. There were, out of probably 100 students, there were maybe five direct marketing majors in that entire master program in that one year that I came through. The DM students, we were like, we don't have time for that. That's too technical. Don't want to do it. I should have done, I should have been a direct marketing major in or discipline had in that discipline because database marketing is the core of everything right now. Database marketing, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, um, Instagram, they are nothing but huge databases. They are huge CRMs that have a, a wealth of information about everybody in the world. And if you took the time to really take advantage of your Facebook page, personal one or, or business one, and everyone here, if you have a Facebook page and you're an entrepreneur, you should not have a regular Facebook page. You should either have a creator account so that you can open up for more you know, followers, et cetera. Yes, you want to have a business page, but that's not what this presentation is all about. But with your, just, let's just talk about Facebook. With your Facebook account alone, you have access for free, the largest database in the world. And if you have, and you know, if you're that person and I don't really use social media, you're missing out on a huge opportunity. Through Facebook, you know who I am, my name, where I work, what, what food I like, what restaurants I go to, what school I attended, what organization I'm a member of. You probably know my anniversary from when I pledged. You know when I'm going to Founders Day. You know when I'm going to the convention. You know if I have pets. You know if I've been divorced. You know if I've been married. You know if I have children. You know if I have a legacy. You know everything there is to know about me, to market to me at the times that I am more likely to purchase your products through social media alone. It is a huge database, CRM, and it's free and you have access to it and you need to use it. You need to use anything that you can use that's going to be free. I love free 99 to sell your business. So let's talk about this. Let's talk about this one strategy and that's mastering your CRM with AI. First of all, do you have a CRM? If you don't have a CRM, you need to get one. I'm not sure if anyone that was already here actually had a CRM that they offered to you. Um, and, you know, if, if, if that were the case, I'm not trying to negate, I'm not trying to sell a CRM or anything like that, but I'm just trying to give you some ideas on how you can use it more effectively. So here's the thing. I want you to stop selling. Stop. Stop selling and stop using email just to send messages. I want you to start building relationships. The way if you have a CRM and you're saying, you know, yeah, I send out, you know, emails every now and then, you know, and 
I'm not really getting too, too great of a response and, um, you know, or I just use my CRM so that I can keep all my clients mailing addresses and, you know, or whatever. So I know who bought what, and you know, and that's that you're missing out. You need to be building relationships with your CRM. That is the only way that you're going to get, you're going to get the most effective, uh, uh, you're going to use it the most effectively is if you start building those relationships. So here's the strategy that I want you to, to use. I want you to just, just open your mind for a second. And I want you to start thinking about the possibilities of what I'm about to share with you. So we already know with a good CRM and, and well, first of all, CRM is Customer Relationship Management System. I'm glad, Anita, I'm glad you said that. Your CRM is your customer relationship management system. So in other words, what it is, it's your database. So your database is where you house all of your client information. Does that make sense for you, Anita? It's where you house all of your client information. So you have someone who buys something from you, you get their email address or maybe their name, their phone number. Where do you put that? That's your CRM. And there are CRMs that are more um, expensive and intricate. And then there are some CRMs that are very straightforward and very easy to manage. And there are some that are out there that are free. Of course, you're going to have limitations on what you can do with them. But you have one. Um, some people just have an Excel spreadsheet <laughs> with all of their clients and customers on it. And that's your CRM system. But I'm going to encourage you that you need to step it up. You need to, if you're going to, if you're here today, it's because you want to take your business to the next level. And so what I am challenging everyone here to do today is to do that. Take your business to the next level. So your CRM is going to help you to stay top of mind with your clients We've talked about that here today. Someone talked about repetition, uh, radio. You know, think about your favorite brand and think about how many ways and how many, how many different ways and how many times they are in front of you. Think about it. Target. You drive down the street, you see the Target sign. Well, Target sign has, some, has um, and I can't think of it right now. Um, our marketing people know exactly what I'm talking about. They have, you know, uh, technology where now you have a, a, something on your phone where every time you pass by uh, an address that's Target, now you're going to start to see Target ads on your phone. That's another touch point. You've looked at the sign. Now you've gotten something on your phone and you're wondering, I'm having a conversation and I mentioned Target. And all of a sudden, I'm seeing all these ads for Target. OK, now you have another. That's your third touch point. Then you go online and you look at Facebook and then all of a sudden as you're scrolling, here comes this target ad. That's the fourth touch point. That, that's what you want to do. That's what you want to cre recreate in the best way possible, the most um, affordable way possible for you to, say, to stay top of mind so that you're no longer a seasonal sale person, right? So, your CRM, it helps you create drip campaigns. What's a drip campaign? Well, a drip campaign helps you again, stay top of mind. So maybe you might send out an email that says, hey, um, homecoming is coming up real soon. You wanna get some new paraphernalia. Okay, so then that comes up maybe in September or October. Then in November, maybe they get an email or another postcard that says something different. Then maybe in November, December, you you're online and you have um you 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 do something online. But bottom line, a drip campaign is just one thing here, there, and then another something that keeps everything, keeps you top of mind of your client. And it's touching them in different ways at different times. Your CRM also helps you understand when your contacts are ready to purchase. Okay. It helps you to also ask for referral, ask for referrals, referrals. I wouldn't be doing anybody justice or myself, my business justice, if I didn't bring up referrals. 
And it helps you to provide incentives and build your brand. You're selling all of our brands. You're selling, you know, all of the sororities and the fraternity brands. But what about you? What is your brand? Do you have a brand? Let's, I'm going to just leave that there. All right, let's go to the next slide. So here's this one strategy on mastering your CRM with writing, reporting. It comes in with writing, reporting, email, drip campaigns, predictive analysis, and you'll see what that is as I get into it, and then personalized solutions. So here's the case study. And I challenge you, and I, well, I will say this, please ask questions at any time. I'm open to you asking questions because you've been getting a lot of information today. And, you know, just, I'm pretty sure everybody's mind is like, whoa, okay, this is some things that I can be doing here. So definitely ask me some questions. So here's a case start. We got Athena's Greek gear, right? And here's the scenario. The customer, Lisa, purchases a sorority sweatshirt online, okay? So she purchases the sweatshirt online. How is AI now going to take this one little sweatshirt purchase and turn this into a customer relationship? That's what we're focusing on, customer relationships. All right, so here's what happens. So you wanna use that AI and we wanna get repeated sales even beyond the traditional seasonal peaks. So here's what happens. As soon as Lisa completes her purchase, her contact details and purchase history are automatically added to the CRM. As a result of that, the CRM, your customer relationship management system, automatically categorizes Lisa as a new customer because she's new, she added a new contact. It activates a new customer protocol. And whatever that engagement or that new customer protocol is, is something that you can define. Now, what is it that you want to get from her? What information did, did we want to get from Lisa when she made that purchase? We want her name, if possible. And you don't have to get all of this stuff, but if you got all of this, think of what you could do. If you had her in your CRM, you had her name, her phone number, what item she purchased, and her email address. Now, that's easy. That's easy right there. You can get that at the point of sale. But you can also perhaps infer from the item that she purchased what her organization of interest is. Maybe she bought something for, you know, a husband or a significant other or whatever. Maybe she bought something for herself or a best friend. Either way it goes, she bought an item and you know that there's some interest in that organization because she bought that item. You may you may be able to know if you ask or if you have some mechanism in place, which I'll talk about later, what institution or college or university she's affiliated with or was affiliated with and what event or location where they purchased. You can already program those types of things in so that when people make those purchases there, you already have that information and that information is in your CRM. And when you pull up that person's name, all of that information comes up with that person. Okay, so we got all of that just at the purchase using the CRM. So now, because we got Athena's email address, the CRM now links up through AI to her social media platforms because how are we on our social media? Through our email addresses. You cannot get on social media without an email address. So the CRM identifies Lisa's social media profiles based on her email and suggests an automatic friend or follow request. Now, Lisa's activities related to Greek life are visible, helping the vendor to anticipate her needs because now you friended her on Facebook, right? Okay, gets even better. You have a phone conversation with Lisa. Maybe you call Lisa or she calls you about her order or you call her 
to inquire about any type of accessories or, you know, whatever it is that she may need to go with her purchase. Or maybe you're just calling to say, hey, thank you for the purchase. Your items are on the way, whatever it is. There is an AI out there where post call, the CRM summarizes your conversation. You can load it right onto your phone. It will summarize your conversation. The CRM transcribes and highlights keywords like accessories or setting up reminders for potential upselling important dates or products of interest. And it provides a transcript and or syncs important dates and products through the CRM. There is, and I'll, I'll give you information on what that is, uh, what product that is, where, and all of these I'm finding are very inexpensive guys, very inexpensive. So you have an AI on your phone who transcribes the conversation and automatically puts keywords into your CRM to trigger your CRM to remind you or to set up um, uh, marketing for purchases based on your conversation. What if in your conversation you said, hey, when, when were you initiated? And she tells you the date that she was initiated and now that date is in your CRM that when that date comes up, you can send her an email that says, hey, happy anniversary. Are you doing something with your line? How about you get some paraphernalia for your picture, for your line picture? Because everybody's doing that now, right? Okay, here's another way. Lisa's initial purchase and phone conversation data are analyzed, which we just talked about. The CRM predicts that Lisa may be interested in complimentary items like sorority hats or bags, or this prediction is based on past data of customers who bought sweatshirts and they kind of pair her, you know, her interests with other interests and, and compare what she may like versus what someone else purchased and suggest that perhaps you she may be interested in that item. Or maybe you talked about an item that is not in stock. And as soon as it is, the CRM knows, okay, we just got this item in stock. Let me send her an email to encourage Lisa. Hey, we just got this item in stock. You haven't done anything yet. All you've done is picked up a phone and made sure the information was in the CRM and the CRM has done everything else for you. It can anticipate future sales, okay? So here's the action. Lisa's initial purchase and phone conversation, again, data are analyzed. The AI-powered insight is that Lisa is sent a promotion that coincide with special events like conventions, homecomings, Greek events. You know, these are, these, and, 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 and Angelica asked earlier, hey, are there any homecomings coming up? Well, if you know that you have clients who went to Jackson State University or you program in your CRM, all of these go to, you know, all of these clients are affiliated with Jackson State. You can now program the CRM through your AI that anyone who attended Jackson State will get an email promoting your products during a particular time frame. Okay. That's all through the power of AI. You're able to sell the consumer in conjunction with the events without vending or traveling costs. You didn't make it to Jackson State's homecoming to be a vendor, but you were still able to take advantage of that particular event through your AI and your CRM. So the, um, the CRM schedules regular check-ins. So this is keeping in contact with your contacts. Knowing Lisa's purchase was in the summer, the CRM schedules an email in the fall suggesting winter gear. It also sends a personalized message on Lisa's birthday because maybe you talked about that. Maybe you asked her, well, when's your birthday? I want to send, I have special gifts for all of my clients on their birthdays. And it offers her a special discount to purchase on her birthday. Then there are referral opportunities. Maybe you have a referral program with your, as a vendor, the AI powered insight. So the CRM detects Lisa's high engagement, meaning she opened all your emails. She clicked on the links. She's really engaged. She's not that person where your emails are going to her spam. And it prompts Athena to send Lisa, to send 
uh, yeah, to send the uh, consumer a referral program invitation or referral incentive, increasing your potential sales. Again, that's something that's on autopilot. You haven't done it. It's your personal assistant who has done this. And then let's talk about post-sale. The CRM schedules a feedback request email two weeks after the purchase. That feedback, the Lisa's positive feedback is highlighted and the CRM suggests showcasing it as a testimonial. Her concerns about fit are addressed in a personalized email, improving customer satisfaction. The customer review is added to social media. And then you tag Lisa in the social media. Or you ask her to tag you. Non-seasonal. Now in the off season, the CRM identifies off peak seasons and the boost to sales, the CRM suggests launching a Greek legacy campaign during off peak moment, uh, months, targeting individuals like Lisa to purchase for family members who are also members of sororities and fraternities. Now the result of all of this is by levering AI powered CRMs, incorporating an AI into because a lot of them will um, you can you can uh, connect uh, some AIs with your CRM. You maintain a consistent relationship. So now we've gone from just selling at an event, selling at whatever, to creating a relationship. And now that relationship is spilling over and giving you more business, even in those off seasons when you're not, you know, when you're waiting for someone else to to purchase that control is now in your hands and we've talked about that a lot today so it not only re ensures repeated business but it turns lisa into your brand ambassador which is even bigger right so it helps you to break out of that seasonal cycle what i want to do is i want to challenge everybody here to try something new. Just try something new. Again, AI is not going to replace you. You shouldn't be scared of it. You're already using it. It is already incorporated into your life. You need to try something new. It's not going to replace you, but an entrepreneur who is using AI will replace one who is not. So here's your homework. I want you to commit to doing something different than you've already done. I want you to commit to bringing value and creating relationships. And then I want you to incorporate AI into your business in some new way. Just, just try it in some new way. So what I have here, I have the presentation resources. Um, what I'm giving you guys, you can scan the QR code if you are on your phone and you can't scan that QR code. You can always just go to bit.ly slash Greek vendor and it'll give you this download. And this is my presentation. It's the, the, the case study from the presentation so that you can kind of look at that and say, who, how can I, let me, let me try to put this into my business. And then I'm also giving you a bonus, a free download um, that I offer on my uh, website, the referral store, and it's my five AI must-haves for marketing and generating referrals. And some of those AIs that um, are in my five AI, AI must-haves are definitely those that I've talked about in this presentation. But in the presentation, there are even more resources that uh, you can use a list of CRMs as well as a list of AI that can do everything that I just talked about um, in this presentation. Um, the other thing that I want to say that I do offer one-on-one -on -one coaching, you can scan that QR code to get in contact with me, or you can just give me a call or send me a text. That is my direct cell number. And I, I do work with several uh, clients. I work with realtors as well as entrepreneurs on incorporating AI into their business, building their brand. That's like my big that is my specialty. Um, and I just want to also say to you guys, and I'm going to go back so that if you guys want to scan the QR code for the downloads um, or go to the uh, site. Um, I This was a great, this was awesome. This was a great conference. Again, I was in and out. But from what I heard, this information, all of the presenters are dead on in terms of 
what it is that you need to do to take your business to the next level. Um, and so I thank you, Angelica, for having this. Uh, this has been great. And if anybody has any questions, I'm more than open to answering those right now. It, if Are you going to use those of you who said, no, you weren't using AI or not yet? Do Are you more inclined to use it? And those of you who are already using it, um, did I offer something that was new that you hadn't thought about, that ways that you could incorporate it? Don't be quiet out there. Thank you, Usher. Okay, awesome. And I'm back. This is Angelica. I'm through a little bitty phone. Um, when I signed, can you all hear me? I'm sorry. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Um, Kim, when I came in, they said I could um your name came up as a host. Can do you want to make him a host? I don't know how that happened, <laughs> but I did say yes. <laughs> Because I'm, gonna, I'm working on a phone with fat fingers. Okay, I'm gonna make you. I'm gonna give it back to you. Yeah, and then just uh, make it um, present um, speaker when the speaker um, speaks. Because I I don't see that um I don't see that button where I can make it where I can make it where a person speak. You know the speaker presentation part. Okay, hold on. So mm -hmm. just keep it on it. Were you able to share your slides? I was. I am oh, sharing it right now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I'm, I just changed bye. the whole, so you should have it. Um, oh. So again, anyone, I'm going to put in the chat the link uh, to reach out to me if you need to. But again, I'm I'm so glad that I've got all these yeses that I, that, that warms my heart because we're, gonna, we're kind of being left behind in the AI, um, in the AI arena. And we don't, we should not be. We should not be. So... Thank you, Angelica, once again. Thank you so much. And just, yeah, just let's make sure that um, the, the speaker part, so whenever somebody speaks, they'll be just there. I, I, I apologize. They're working in my area from the storms the other night, and they're doing brownouts. So I was knocked off, and then, of course, I was knocked off because I kept putting in the wrong um, password on my phone for Zoom. So they locked me out for 30, uh, you know. 20 minutes. I don't know how I got on, but thank God. Thank you, Kimberly, for a great presentation.
Um, what I was saying before, I was so rudely cut off by the DTE Energy Company, is that um, we were talking about traditional media <laughs> being combined with digital media and omni channels and radio and television. Now, one thing that I will do is that I will start conducting some test ads um, for on Tubi and Hulu. And I will talk more about that in the groups after the summit. Um, with the Tubi and the um, Hulu, I'm going to talk more about your company, not about the boards. It'll be about your company, okay? Um, so I'll talk more about that. Um, when we Before we go on, I want to make sure. Is Re Regina Legenda Jefferson in the house? Is she here yet? Gina? Legender. Okay, it's Candace Bruton here. Gina and see Gina may not be here because it's not her time. We have Willie Hyman or Morgan Nicole Smith. So if they're not here yet, what I would like to do is open up the floor um, to some discussion as well. And so opening up the floor, um, the first topic is um, vendor horror stories. It's Halloween every year for vendors. We, and when I say Halloween, I'm talking about the horror stories that we experience as being a vendor. Now, I used to be a vendor back in the day before license. And so uh, um, that's why you hear me call, um, you know, including me in that number of being a vendor. I've not been a vendor since they started licensing. However, um, I would like to open up the floor about horror stories that have impacted vendors. And then I would like to have your input, okay? As a vendor, um, the first story that I would like to talk about um, are customers. And sometimes your customers are not forthcoming. Sometimes customers are sneaky. And I hate to say it, sometimes those customers may be members of our own organizations. And I'm opening up the story with one vendor. A vendor um, a couple of weeks ago got a call about non-delivery of her merchandise. And the vendor, of course, looked in their records and it showed that it had been indeed. Well, I think our I think our stuff is coming back on. But um what happened is that it had indeed been um delivered. Not only that. She had a picture, the vendor had a picture of the product on the porch. Not only that, that picture was taken by the delivery man. And you could see the distinctive, um, you know, designs of the um, brick of the, of the bill of, you know, of the home. You saw the vendor's foot. And when she showed that picture to that customer, the customer said, that's not my house. I don't know what house that is. That's not my house. It was never delivered. So the vendor went further. She went to Zillow, the realty, you know, site where you can look up real estate, okay? And um, she put in the address of what she had on file, okay? And Zillow shows pictures of the home. And the home is the same brick mortar that that's on the delivery photo that the delivery man took. And, and so she shows this to that um, customer and says, this address that I shipped it to, it's the same address that's on Zillow. That's the same address that I see in my picture. And the vendor, I'm sorry, the customer drops the conversation. She comes back maybe an hour later and she says, oh, it was delivered to my neighbor's house by mistake and she forgot to tell me. Now, had that vendor 